So you are a parent that wants to buy a new PC for your kids for school, but you don't want to waste a lot of money. In this video, we are going to build a $350 budget desktop PC that is perfect for web browsing, office applications, Zoom, and even some light gaming. Coming up. Hi, welcome to Full Tower TV. My name is Rafael and I'm a former professional PC builder. My mission is to help you build your next PC better. On this channel, we are doing build guides and PC setups that are suited for your specific needs. Our focus will be on a powerful computer that is great for day-to-day -day use, but is also safe for kids. And we will talk about two additional pieces of hardware that you probably didn't think about. So in this video, we will go over all the components that you need and I will explain why I chose them. As always, links for all the parts will be in the description down below. And with that said, let's begin with the build. Okay, so for our CPU, we decided to go with the Ryzen platform. And the reason why is because there is a very good deal on the Ryzen 5 4600G. We can go with an Intel version instead, but the prices for the Intel CPUs right now are very high. For example, a former generation i3 4-core processor is over $100 right now and also the motherboards are pretty expensive. So it doesn't really make sense to go with the Intel CPU right now. Now the Ryzen 5 4600G is not only powerful, but it also comes with integrated Radeon Vega 7 graphic cards. The Radeon Vega 7 can do up to 60 FPS in low to medium settings in light games such as Fortnite or Rocket League and etc. Also, it comes with an AMD Wraith Stealth cooler right in the box. That means that we don't need to spend extra money for a CPU cooler. So for $95, we get a great CPU that is perfect for work, for study, and even for light gaming. Now for our motherboard, I decided to go with the Gigabyte A520M S2H. It's only 74 bucks right now on Amazon, and there's a couple of reasons why I decided to go with this motherboard. Now one thing to remember is that motherboards do not affect performance, but it's important to see that you have all the features that you need and it supports all the other components that you have in the system. So it supports up to third gen AMD Ryzen processors. Of course it's an AM4 socket, which is our 4600G Ryzen 5 is an AM4 CPU. It have two dual channel DDR4 RAM slots and it also have a PCIe NVMe M.2 slot that is third gen. Now, in terms of I.O., this motherboard have four USB 3.0 ports and two USB 2.0 ports, and also all the video output that you will need, such as HDMI, VGA, or DVI. Now, one thing this motherboard doesn't have is Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. It does have a one gigabit LAN connection at the back of the motherboard, so if you want to connect your computer through Ethernet cable, you can do so. But if you want an option for a motherboard that has built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, you can go with the Gigabyte B550M. It costs roughly around $35 more, but because it's a higher chipset, not only it have built-in dual-band Wi-Fi and 4.2 Bluetooth, it can also support up to four sticks of RAM, and it also supports PCIe Gen 4 M.2 SSDs. Now, to be honest, you don't really need a PCIe Gen 4 for this computer, nor even a PCIe Gen 3. Even if you install a normal 2.5 inch SSD, it will be perfectly fine for our use case. But for 35 bucks more, you just get an overall better motherboard. In my opinion, if you really need Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connection in your motherboard, you can go with the Gigabyte A520M for $74, and you can add Wi-Fi and Bluetooth PCIe card to your motherboard. This is a great example for a Wi-Fi card from TP-Link. And the reason why I prefer this solution, it's because I can carry this card into my next system and I don't have to spend my money again in the next system to buy a motherboard with built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So it's an overall, not only saving in the cost right now, it's $5.00. Uh, cheaper than buying uh, a motherboard with Wi-Fi and built-in Bluetooth, but it's also cheaper for the future. You won't have to buy a motherboard with built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and spend another extra 30 or 40 bucks or whatever. 
So of course, this is something that is out of the budget and I will put this aside. It will be linked in the description down below. I will link both of the motherboards and I will also link the Wi-Fi cards so you can choose whatever solution you like. Okay, so for our memory, I decided to go with the Silicon Power 16GB 2x8 kit. The price of DDR4 memory right now is very low and there is no reason to go with an 8GB even though it will be sufficient enough for our use cases. Always make sure to go with the dual channel memory with two sticks because the CPU can utilize that in order to give you better performance. Also one thing to mention, this is a CL16 kit which means that it will be better for gaming and last but not least, this is a 3200MHz RAM and specifically for Ryzen CPUs it's better to get something around 3200MHz or even 3600MHz but because our CPU supports only up to 3200MHz there is no reason to overspend and get something more than that. Okay, so for our storage, I decided to go with 500 gigabytes of PCIe NVMe Gen 3 SSD from Western Digital. Now the price right now on SSDs is super low. Look at this, it's 27 bucks for 500 gigabytes from Western Digital and the huge advantage of M.2 SSDs that you only need one screw in order to install it in the motherboard and you don't need any cables or anything like that. Now of course there's tons of options out there and if you want you can go with one terabyte capacity or even lower than that. But for me I feel like 500 gigabytes it's pretty much the sweet spot for our use case and I don't really see a reason to go above or under it. Now the reason why I went with this specific SSD it's because first of all Western Digital is a very known brand but within the PCIe NVMe SSDs there are different speeds. The maximum speed that you can get from a, a device like this is up to 3500 megabytes per second read and write speeds. It's way more than what you really need but for 27 bucks it's it's a great deal. I mean uh, it's pretty much a no-brainer. It's half the price right now on Amazon. Now even though I said that Western Digital is a reliable company always make sure to have backup for your files and your data. This is one of the two things that I told you about that you should consider adding to your budget. So Western Digital also have external hard drives such as this one. It's a small hard drive uh, roughly about this size uh, that you can carry around with you. It connects uh, through USB to pretty much any computer. You can store all your important files on it to have a backup. You can use it to transfer uh, files from a computer to computer. Uh, this is just uh, pretty much a mandatory in my eyes at least these days to have something that you can uh, rely on uh, not to lose all your important data and also have an option to move files from a computer uh, to a computer. It's also a great way to do so. A one terabyte cost right now on Amazon less than 50 bucks. It's also on sale. It comes with three years warranty and it's also USB 3.0. It means that you can transfer your data much faster and yeah, don't miss on this opportunity. I think it's a very good investment to have. Of course, you can go with higher capacities if you really need to, but I feel for uh, 50 bucks, one terabyte is a very good deal. So I will throw a link in the description down below for this external hard drive as well, so you can check it out. Okay, so let's talk about our case. As you remember in the beginning of the video, I told you that the kit safety is something that we are going to pay attention in this build. So I decided to go with the Zalman S2 ATX Mitar case. It's 55 bucks right now on Amazon. It's not all on sale or something, but uh, it comes with three pre-installed 120 millimeter fans, which is great, great value. I know this case doesn't have any fancy RGB or something like that, but one of the reasons why I chose this case for safety, it's because it has uh, an acrylic side panel and not a tempered glass side panel. Tempered glass, as you know, can break. I saw a lot of examples online from people that woke up one day in the morning and they saw all the glass shattered on the floor and it can be very dangerous, especially for kids. Acrylic can be less pretty, but it's also much more safer and much more durable than tempered glass side panels. Also, they weigh a lot less. 
So overall, the computer will be very lightweight. Now, if you want, there is a version of this case, uh, which is not the S2, it's the S3, which comes, uh, instead of a front mesh panel, it comes with this kind of uh, uh, metal uh, brushed aluminum design in the front. They are the same price, 55 bucks for both of them. And if you really insist on having tempered glass and you really want that beautiful glass look on your computer, both of these models have a tempered glass version and not acrylic one. It will add you five more bucks for the price. But again, in my opinion, just get the acrylic one. It's much safer and also the computer will be much more lightweight. Okay, so our last component is the power supply. Now power supplies are very hard to find these days. There is a huge shortage of power supplies. Uh, in the last couple of months. Now I decided to go with the EVGA 500 GD 500 watts. It's 80 plus gold certified. It costs 65 bucks right now on Amazon. It's on sale. It's $10 cheaper uh, than uh, uh, usual. The prices are a bit high right now for good power supplies. So this is not a very high end power supply, but it's also not a crappy one. EVGA is a very known brand and I would definitely trust this power supply uh, to last long. You can also see that they give you five year warranty for this unit. And it also have all the protections that you need. And also it comes with black sleeve cables, which I think looks a lot better than, you know, the like uh, yellow and red cables that you see on like very cheap power supplies. I will definitely trust this power supply to do the work, but I wouldn't trust a power supply to completely protect my computer and what I recommend to get is a UPS and basically what it does it acts like a battery bank if the power goes off it won't turn off the system and it would actually protect it and will give you time to keep working for roughly about 20 minutes or so it depends on the system and on consumption of the system and talking about consumption this particular APC UPS battery have 225 uh, watts of uh, delivery and if we look at our system that we have built up until now we can see that it takes uh, roughly around 150 149 uh, watts of power so getting this unit I think makes a lot of sense it's also on sale right now on Amazon for 60 bucks I think it's a good investment to protect your computer make sure that it will last long and you won't lose any important data Okay, so overall for 350 bucks, not including the external hard drive and the UPS, we have a very capable desktop PC that is perfect for day-to-day -day use, for your kids for school, for web browsing, office applications, Zoom meetings, and even for light gaming. You can upgrade the system in the future. It is safe to use with the acrylic side panel on the case and also with a very good power supply. So hey, if you got value from this video, make sure to hit the like button. But before you do that, please do me a favor. Let me know in the comments down below if you would like to see also some recommendations for peripherals that will suit your needs. Maybe things such as monitors, keyboards, mice, headphones or even a webcam. And if you are wondering what to watch next, I recommend you to check one of our build guides on how to build a computer. And as always, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.